welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. In the year of our Lord, 1976, and I use the appellation with some sadness, there were 18,780 murders committed in the United States. These are the latest figures from the FBI, and the only pleasant thing about them is the fact that the rate decreased 8.3% from the previous year. A trend I fervently hope will continue. But where murder seems the only way out, there is always a story. This is one of them. <laughs> Our mystery drama, A Better Mouse Trap, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars John Beale. While on the subject of statistics, here's one for you. 1970 was the last year most metropolises in the U.S. enjoyed a population advance. Ever since then, the amount of people in the cities has been declining. Where have they gone? Mostly to the suburbs. Here's Ralph Lester, a typical suburbanite. He moved out of New York before 1970. At the time, it seemed a great idea. A garden, a house, a family, good schools. How has it worked out for him? Let me say only that Ralph Lester is tired, hates the train ride, has had at least one too many drinks, and is worried about, among other things, finances. He doesn't know yet how worried he ought to be. Lucy, the laundry boy is home. For crying out loud. Where are you? Lucy? Where is she? Hey, Lucy, I'm home. Where are you? I'm upstairs, Ralph. Oh, okay. What are you doing? I'm packing. Huh? Never mind. I'll be right down. No, no, that's all right. I'm up here already. How about a drink if I rush them? What time is dinner? I haven't any idea. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Dinner is your problem, Ralph. Oh, you mean you've eaten already or something? No, I haven't. Did I forget? Are we going out? I'm eating out, yes. I don't know about you. Well, if you're going out, you mean you didn't leave me something? I'm supposed to scrounge it up by myself? Why not? I think it might make good practice. Good practice for what? For the future. When I'm not here. When you're not here? That's right, Ralph. I'm leaving you. Le leaving me? What for? It isn't so much what for as why. Yes, I, I think that's the correct question. All right, then why? Two things. Money and Gloria. Gloria? Your uh, secretary. That's the politest term I can think of. Well, you can't think that there's anything between me and Gloria. I and don't me. think I know. Well, how do you know? Well, I'm ashamed to say it, but I hired a man to follow you. Oh, brother, I think I'd better get that drink. I wouldn't. Not quite yet. You'll need a clear head for the other discussion. What discussion? Money, Ralph. My money. I hope you still have it, because I want it. And if you don't have it, I'll make you account for every penny, no matter what court I drag you through. Oh, now, wait a minute, Lucy. Wait a minute. I'm really bush tonight. It was a tough day. Just give me a chance to pull myself together so I can... So you can what? Make up some new lies? Now, just hold up. I don't know what kind of lies people have been telling you. And if that dried-up, middle-aged old witch next door... Don't you who... take off on Ellie Pratt. She's the best friend I have in this stupid town. Maybe the only one. The whole thing is going to be brought out in the open. Unless you can convince me in black and white that you haven't been cheating on me two ways. Robbing me blind and carrying on with another woman. Oh, Lucy, I swear I don't know what you're talking don't about. Don't lie to me anymore. You talked me into giving you $300,000 worth of bearer bonds to turn into cash. Sure, it's a time to stay liquid. The minute I decide the market's right, we can jump in and make we? a joint... It's my money. You know what I mean. No, Ralph, I don't. 
Because, you see, I've been checking into something else about all the money Father left me. And that you were holding, building into a fortune. What do you mean? I got Father's old lawyer to dig into just what securities I hold. The ones you were supposed to have bought for me. What happened to those securities, Ralph? Where are they? You know the firm is holding them for you in your account. Mr. Stearns couldn't find any record of them. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Lucy. The old man is senile. I have all the proof and the documentation. It may be too late to get my money back. But I'm going to fix it so you get punished for stealing it. And I'm not going to let you have a chance to squander any of it on a cheap little tart you pretend is your secretary. Look, 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 look you don't understand. It's... It, it's been a difficult period, Lucy. I've, I've had to try to cover short sales and auction deals and, and, and if there was any question now, I could be ruined, Lucy. I could be sent to jail. Oh, I know, Ralph. That's just where I'd like to send you. Lucy, please. Listen, you don't know what a spot I'm in right at the moment. You mean you embezzled other people's funds, too? Well, it, it isn't embezzling. You, you don't understand business and the, and the market. It's just that sometimes you have to to, to 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 manipulate. And now, just at the moment, just while the market turns, I'm in such terrible shape it'll be the end for me. But I, I promise you... I wouldn't you... believe you whatever you told me. And I'm going to tell you, no matter what it costs me, I'm going to call the turn. I'm going to shout it out. Oh, no, you're not. Yes, just watch me. Don't think... Let, let go of me. What are you doing? I'm trying to shut your mouth if you want. Well, be, be careful. You're, you're choking Lucy, me. are you going to ride along with me until I get out I'll of I'll see you in hell first. I'm trying to... Ralph, you're trying to... Now, it's not until you promise... Uh, uh, are you going to promise to button up? Lucy, if you think for one moment that I'm going to let you nail me to the wall, you get another guess. Coming. After all I've put up with, an older woman mewling and scolding just because you thought you had the whip hand of money, just because you... <laughs> Lucy. Lucy, I'm sorry. I didn't... Oh, good Lord. Lucy. Lucy. Oh, no. No, no, she she can't be. She's dead. Oh. What am I going to do now? Call Gloria. Here. I got to call Gloria. Hello? Uh, Gloria? Yeah, Ralphie. Hey, you sound kind of funny. What is it? She's... She's dead. Who? My wife, Lucy. Gee, that's terrible. Well, honey, I'm sorry, you know, but... Honey Bun, it solves a lot of trouble for us, doesn't it? No, not a bit. Well, it makes it worse. What do you mean? Oh, Gloria, she didn't just up and die for herself to make it convenient for us. Well, then what? I... I killed her. You... You what? I didn't mean to. It was an accident. I mean... She found out about us, and I lost my head, and I... I, I... You murdered her? But she was threatening to scream out about us, and I wanted to keep her quiet. All I did was put my hands on her throat, and before I knew it... Oh, Ralphie, I, I don't want to hear any more. I'm getting out of it. I can't. Oh, no, you're in it up to your neck. You, huh? me, how we've been kiting accounts. You can't involve me in that. Can you? Ralphie, what are we going to do? Well, I, I... I got a notion. A real crazy notion. It's the only way I can see out of it. Yeah? What is it? We'll have to kidnap her. How do you kidnap someone who's already dead? Well, I don't mean for real, Glory. I mean pretend to. No one else knows she's dead yet. You, Lucy! <laughs> Where are you, darling? Peach stick. What is it? Ralph? That silly old Snoop Hilly Pratt from next door. I gotta hang up. Nobody home? Oh, she's in the house for the love of Mike. She's on the way upstairs. I'll, I'll, I'll call you back. You home? Gloria, the woman is in the house. I'll call you right back. I know you're there. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, brother. Ah, uh, that you, Ellie? In the flesh, not a picture. Can I come up? Oh, no, no. I'll, uh, I'll be right down. Don't slip on the soap. <laughs> soap. 
Yeah. And you'll never know how tempted I am to invite you up here to the bathroom and drown you in the... Sorry to keep you waiting, Ellie. Oh, that's all right. You know me. I just make myself at home. Uh, where's Lucy? Uh, Lucy? Mm. Oh, no, she's uh, she's uh, getting ready for dinner. Oh, then I won't be a minute. I'll just run up and talk no, to her. I mean, she's in the shower. She's taking a shower, can't you hear? Oh, oh, yes. Well, look, uh, tell her I'll drop back in 10 or 15 minutes. Well, we, and... uh, we won't be here. At dinner time? No, we, we, we're going out for dinner. Oh, that's funny. What's funny? Well, I talked to Lucy on the phone just before you came home. She told me she'd be here till 9 o'clock, and I'd better pick it up before then. Uh, uh, pick what up? The envelope. What envelope? From the brownies. From the brownies? Yes, you see, it's the annual charity drive, and each den mother collects the pledges the little dears bring back to the den. Oh. Now, Lucy's is the last one this year. Maybe if I just looked no, around... No, really, I... Ellie, we, we've got to get out to dinner. Oh, well, who are you dining with so early? Uh, no one. I mean, that is, we're, we're just going out to to, uh, to celebrate for a change. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. You know, I haven't liked the way Lucy's been looking lately. And she didn't seem herself at all today. Do you know what's what's troubling her? Oh, well, that's, that's a private matter. But I can promise you nothing's troubling Lucy now. Oh, good. Uh, I wish I did have the envelope, though. I, I peeked about, but it doesn't seem to be down here. Uh, maybe if I just ran up and called to it Ellie, through I the door... Ellie, I promise you, I'll get the envelope and deliver it to you. Well, I really must run. It was just... Um, uh, my, Lucy does take a long shower, doesn't she? Huh? Oh, oh, well, she she was uh, working in the garden all day. Really? I I didn't see her out there. Well, most of the day. Now, Ellie, I, I, I have to change, too, and I... Oh, of course. You don't have to treat me as anything else but family. I'll let myself out. No, I, I'll do it. I, I want to lock the door anyway. Lock the door? Uh, yes, we are... Uh, we'll be going out through the garage. Ralph, are you all right? You look a bit drawn. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, now, how did he get out, that fool cat? Oh, now, don't you talk to poor Ginger like that. He's Lucy's best baby, aren't you, darling? What's he mewling about? Oh, Ellie, will you put him down? Oh, the poor baby's just looking for his supper. I'm surprised Lucy hasn't fed him. Oh, she, 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 she probably forgot. It's not like her. Uh, there isn't anything wrong between you and Lucy, Ralph. Oh, what could be wrong? Oh, I don't know. She hasn't seemed herself lately, and and you seem so nervous tonight. I'm just tired. Look, Ellie, I don't want to keep Lucy waiting. Yeah, of course, of course. I'll run along. Now, tell Lucy I'll drop by first thing in the morning to pick up the envelope. No, no, there's no need. I'll drop it in in your mailbox on my way to the train. Oh, shut up. I don't need any trouble from you. <laughs> what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What indeed, Ralph Lester? Murder in itself is a shocking enough thing, but when you are practically caught in the act... It's enough to unnerve the strongest mind. Still, you've been quite clever keeping Ellie away. No one knows yet that Lucy is dead. You still have a chance. But, and that's the large question, how are you going to use it? I shall return shortly with Act Two. We left Ralph Lester in sheer panic, wondering what on earth he could do. The effort of controlling his emotions and trying to act normally with his next-door neighbor after he had just murdered his wife has left him drained, his knees weak, his mind a blank that tries to shut out the terrible reality. Now, suddenly remembering a vagrant thought that had crossed it earlier, he goes to the phone to talk to his girlfriend, Gloria. 
Gloria, it's our only chance. I didn't know, Ralphie. I certainly didn't bargain on murder. It isn't going to be murder. I told you, it's going to be a kidnapping. Only the victim will never turn up. Do you think you can make the police believe that? With your help, yes, I think I can. I'll even seem to pay a ransom and make it look like the money's been picked up. And I have a way to get it back. Why don't you just take the money and run, Ralph? Spend my life hiding out and looking over my shoulder? No, no way. After the kidnappers don't return Lucy, I'm taking that money to cover all we've stolen out of our customers' accounts. We? Oh, yes, you're in this too, Gloria. You try to sit back and let me get hooked for murder and I'll drag you in with me. You wouldn't do that to me. Don't tempt me. Ah, uh, but Gloria, baby, don't you see? After, I mean, as, as soon as the heat's off, her will leaves everything to me. So you and I can live like royalty the rest of our lives. Will we still be that rich? Lucy was rolling in money. Honey, don't let me down. Oh, of course with you. Now, just, just tell me what I have to do. Okay. Okay, here it is. I want you to send a letter a very special way, but it's important that the postmark is New York. What do you mean, a special way? I want you to take a bunch of old newspapers, magazines, circulars, anything with print, and cut out the letters to spell out the message. And now, here's what it should say. <laughs> Yeah, this is Fairbairn Police Detective Sergeant Castelli speaking. Yes, sir. Uh, could I have the name and address, please? That's Ralph Lester. L E S T E R. Yeah, yeah. Check. And uh, you just got home. You're quite sure your wife is missing. Uh, just for the record, you got back at what time? Twelve o five. All right. Now, uh, try not to worry, sir. Your wife may have been scared and run to the neighbors. Yes, sir. We'll be there right away. You uh, want me to use the siren, Lieutenant? No, Sergeant Castelli. No sense waking up the whole community this time of night. You think this is just a false alarm, huh? To break in? Nope. The wife? Who knows? Could be some domestic squabble. All right, the guy sounded cold sober, Lieutenant. And I figure you must think there's more to it than that since you hiked along. Uh, Ralph Lester's an important citizen in this town, Ricky. He pays enough taxes he could expect VIP treatment. Yeah, rich neighborhood. Yep. He's a big stockbroker in New York. And his wife was the daughter of A.B. Trumbull. Cosmetic business. Millions. It could just be she was snatched. Kidnapped? Huh? I thought you figured she just walked out. I don't figure nothing till I get all the facts. Or as many of them as I can. Better take Long Point Road. We make better time. And, Mr. Lester, when you got back from the movie, you found that the house had been broken into. And your wife was missing. Huh? Yeah, that's right, Lieutenant. What movie did you see? Uh, I was at the uh, Fine Arts Theater. Mm -hmm. And you went alone, huh? Well, it was the last night the film was going to be showing. But you and Mrs. Lester had had dinner together, huh? In, uh, in a manner of speaking. Sir? Well, you see, we started to go out because I thought that Lucy... I thought Lucy was looking tired. But on the way to the restaurant, she decided she didn't feel up to dining out. So I just got some roast beef and coleslaw and that sort of thing, and we... We came back home to eat. I was a little worried about Lucy. Yes, sir. And then you went out to the movie by yourself, huh? Well, she didn't want me to miss the film. She'd been to it earlier in the week, as a matter of fact, with a friend of hers. Oh. A friend? Uh, Mrs. Eleanor Pratt, she lives next door. Well, then perhaps she might have seen something. Oh, I, I doubt it. They, they broke in on the side of the house away from her. And besides, there's quite a bit of vegetation screening us from each other. Oh, we'll check that out later. Um, can you think of any reason why your wife might have been kidnapped? Well, not really, except that, of course, her father was a very prominent man. But well, he's been dead for many years, hasn't he? Yes, nearly seven years now. But, of course, my wife was his sole heir. So you're more or less convinced that that's what happened? 
I beg pardon? I mean, uh, there isn't any possibility that the break-in and your wife's disappearance are not connected. I, uh, I, I don't follow you. You don't think Mrs. Lester could have just left by herself, walked out? Oh, why? I mean, we've been married for nearly 20 years. We were happy. I'm sorry, sir. My job is to ask questions and to find your wife as fast as I can. Now, look, if there's any danger to her life in any way, I don't want police interference. We'll work with you, Mr. Lester, as carefully as we can, if it's a kidnapping. What else can it be? We'll know that soon enough. One way or another. Now, you say, Mrs. Pratt, it is Mrs., correct? That's right. I'm a widow. My husband died almost ten years ago. I'm sorry. So am I. Um, as Mrs. Lester didn't say anything to you by any chance about uh, going away. No. Why should she? Well, I thought you were the best of friends. We are, but I didn't mean that. I meant... Why would she want to go away? Oh, any number of reasons. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Lester didn't have any marital problems, did they? Well, I never heard of it. Lucy never said anything at all like that to me. I didn't say that they had. It's just, it's just something we always ask. She's a little older than him, isn't she? Yes, uh, nearer my age. When was the last time you saw Mrs. Lester? Oh, uh, uh, the day before yesterday. Mm -hmm. I did run over just before dinner tonight to pick up something from her, but I didn't get it, and I couldn't see her. Why not? Well, you see, she was taking a shower, and Ralph and she were getting ready to go out. Ralph seemed to be a bit nervous and in kind of a hurry, so I didn't stay. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it you were going to pick up? Oh, just some money for the Girl Scouts. But Ralph promised to drop it by tomorrow morning. He you think Lucy was kidnapped? Mm, all the evidence points that way. But if she was, we'll all know soon enough. Or at least Mr. Lester will. Thank you, Mrs. Pratt. I don't think we'll have to bother you again. Oh, uh, good morning, Lieutenant. Almost afternoon, Mr. Lester. Heard anything? No. Well, they didn't contact you by phone? Who? Well, the kidnappers. Oh, oh, no, 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 no contact. Well, you wouldn't be keeping quiet about it if they had. Why? It isn't a good idea, Mr. Lester. The police can help. No, I wouldn't take any chances on risking my wife's life. Oh, I can understand that. But nothing through the mail? No. If this is a kidnapping, don't. Try to handle it yourself. Please. You need help. Professional help. We won't endanger your wife's life in any way. What we'll try to do is to protect it. Just help us do our duty. Okay, Lieutenant, up to a point. As soon as I know anything, I, I'll let you know. And now, if you'll excuse me, I, I couldn't go into New York today, and I'm trying to handle my business by phone. It's... Well, that's... That's probably a customer now. See you. I'll be around. Okay, Sergeant Castelli. No news yet. Uh, where to now, Luke? Let's take a short hop next door to Mrs. Pratt. So you got your envelope all right, Mrs. Pratt, huh? Oh, yes. Ralph must have put it in my mailbox early this morning. Uh, you look a little, a little strange. Something troubling you? Oh, it's just something personal. And I I didn't get much sleep. I'll try not to let this bother you, ma'am. Mrs. Lester will be all right, I'm sure. Oh, I, I'm not worried about Lucy's disappearance anymore. At least not that way. That wasn't what kept me awake. Well, what did, ma'am? The cat. Ginger, Lucy's cat, yowling like a little banshee. I guess she missed Lucy as much as me. Mm-hmm. What stopped you from worrying about Mrs. Lester? Oh, why, the note she'd put in the envelope. 
I wonder if I could see it, Mr. Pratt. Well, I don't know. It, it's rather personal. But it might have something to do with the case. Hmm? I suppose it might. Well, may I see it then? Oh, I, I guess Lucy wouldn't mind my showing it to you. No, oh, ma'am. Dearest Ellie, just a scribble to say goodbye for a while. I'm going away. And I can't face anyone with why just at the moment. I suppose you've noticed that I haven't exactly been myself lately. If I had to tell you why, I'd just break down and fall apart. I'll write you all about it once I'm settled. I have valued, and always will value, your friendship. Yours, Lucy. Just what would you figure this had to do with the case, ma'am? Why, it, it accounts for her disappearance. Does that sound like she was kidnapped? No, ma'am, it doesn't. But then, this was written before the break-in. Sounds like. So? It seems like it doesn't change things after all. Is Ralph Lester going to get away with his dangerous and desperate gamble? Has Lieutenant Barth picked up any of the tenuous clues that are falling his way? And if he has, can he possibly strengthen them enough to make them stand up in court to obtain a conviction? In short... Can Ralph Lester get away with murder? I shall return shortly with Act Three. There is a very simple and totally laid out suspense to this story. Can a man who has committed a murder cover his tracks by making it seem to be a kidnapping from which the victim never returned? In the first act, we witnessed the crime. In the second act, we watched the investigation. Now in the third, we are watching, or listening, if you will, to the big question. Can Ralph Lester get away with murder? Morning, Mr. Lester. Morning, Lieutenant. Come, come right on in. Uh, you say you've had a communication from the kidnappers? Yes, here it is. You can read it yourself. Oh. We have Mrs. Lester. She is safe. Oh. She'll stay that way unless you refuse to pay the ransom. We want $300,000 in small bills. Nothing over a twenty. You will be notified where to leave the money. Do not call in the police, or we cannot answer for the safety of your wife. This came in today's mail? Ah, uh, yes. So it is a kidnapping. Well, what kind of statement is that? What else? May I see the envelope? Sure. Postmark New York. The message pasted up with letters out of newspapers, magazines, and so on. That's pretty clever. How can we trace them? I don't know. Of course, I'll take this and subject it to latent fuming tests and blood print kits. Well, wh what for? Well, we may be able to lift hidden fingerprints, find out if criminals are involved. And now we can set up an oversee team. Now, let's get this straight, Lieutenant. I don't want anyone interfering in my wife's safe return. We don't want any danger to her either. But there are things that can be done to monitor... No, sir, I want the police out of this entirely. You'll pay the ransom? I'm already making arrangements for that. How can you be 100% sure that this message isn't a phony? What? Well, uh, I, I never thought of that. Well, then let us work with you. Uh, no, I, I'm afraid to. All I care about is Lucy's safe return. We'll maintain a low profile. Low enough not to interfere with that. The thing is, with kidnappers, you can't trust them. Um... Lieutenant, tell me something. Do you have some idea that my wife wasn't kidnapped? Why? I don't know. It's just your attitude? Let's put it, Mr. Lester, that I'm afraid you want to handle too much of this by yourself. And it's tricky business. Now, if someone's holding your wife, you're going to be contacted, probably by phone. You going to try to handle it from there on in? 
I mean, the, the drop-off and the exchange? Well, that's what this note told me to do. Well, supposing you pay the ransom and you don't get your wife back. If you don't work with us, who's to know what happened? Oh. Okay, I'll, I'll work with you. Check. Well, the normal thing is, you'll get a phone call. We'll try to trace it. But I guess no chance. Whatever they tell you, we'll take it from there, okay? And what we wait for is a phone call. Yeah? This is Ralph, Gloria. Oh, yeah. Hi. Now, look, I'm calling from a payphone. I got to give you some instructions, and you got to listen close. Are you with me? Oh, sure, honey. All right, then listen. At exactly 8 p.m. this evening, I want you to go to a public phone booth and call me at my place here in Connecticut. Have enough change to put the call through from your side. Now, look, you know that sexy whisper you have? You mean like when I say, <laughs> are you my big, strong baby who's going to make his mama happy? Yeah, that's it. I want you to use just that tone. Call me at exactly 8 and here's what you say. Tomorrow morning, you will take the train, arriving Grand Central, 9.42. You will have the money with you. You will go to Box 431, which you will find open. The money must be in a brown paper bag. Put it there and shut the box. Walk away immediately. Obey us, or your wife's life is on your conscience. Did you hear that, Lieutenant? Yeah, I heard it. Any chance of tracing it? None. Not long enough. Was that a man or a woman? Oh, hard to tell with the whisper. You recognize the voice? No. What are you going to do? Well, leave the money exactly as I was told to do. And I want the police out of this. I'm not taking any chances on Lucy's life. It'd be better to have us standing by. No. Uh, you can talk us out of it, Mr. Lester, but the FBI is another story. The, the FBI? Well, there are more than one state is involved now. They have to be called in. But, but if they interfere, it, it could be my, my wife's well, life. They're very discreet. They won't move openly until your wife is returned. Until they know they can rescue her. Well, I don't like it. Maybe maybe I'll just call off the whole thing. Don't you want your wife back? Well, of course. Well, then you'd just better follow along the way they tell you. I don't know. I I have a strange hunch that... No, no, I can't say it. You don't think that your wife is dead already, do you? It is a possibility, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's always a possibility. Well, I have to get back to the station house. Good luck tomorrow. I guess I'll need it. Hey, but uh, what happened, Lieutenant? Come on back in my office out of this racket. He, uh, he left the door, didn't he? Well, just as ordered. Let's get in the office. But no one picked it up, huh? Oh, that's the whole foul up. The locker was checked. They're only good for 24 hours, and the FBI knew it would run out at 12 noon. But when no one showed up to pick up the ransom, they moved in. And when they had it opened, the locker was empty. Why? Well, they goofed somehow. Don't ask me. Someone managed to sneak in and pick up the dough. But uh, Mrs. Lester hasn't been returned. Not yet. If ever. Hey, you think... <laughs> Lieutenant Barr speaking. Oh, yes, Mr. Pratt. I see. Well, did you call Mr. Lester? He's not home. Well, that's strange. Oh. Oh. I'll tell you what. Let me come right over. Come on, Ricky. We're going over to Mrs. Pratt's. Why, what's the matter? She's having cat trouble. Cat trouble? Yeah, somebody killed her neighbor's cat. <laughs> And you say you heard the cat all last night till about one this morning? That's right, Lieutenant. Crying as if his heart would break. Crying? Oh, he was really howling up a storm. Poor little thing. 
<laughs> like, like he was a mourner at a wake. Where was the cat making all this noise? Oh, you can see right out the window. It was bright moonlight last night, and there he was, sitting on the old well, just howling. You mean the one right out in back of Mr. Lester's place there? That's right. Oh. <laughs> I remember years ago when we all depended on it for water, before the Farndale Hydraulic put the pipes in. And that's where the cat was yowling? Yes. I thought he'd never stop. But he did. Yes. Just as I thought I'd have to go out and do something about it. Poor little pussycat. Morning Lucy not being here. And then this afternoon, you found the cat's body. Yes. In the bushes between your property and Mr. Lester's. Yes. Strangled. Yes. No possibility another animal could have killed him. I, I don't see how there... There wasn't a mark on him otherwise. Who do you think would kill a cat like that, Mrs. Pratt? I don't know. There'd have to be some motive other than the fact that the poor animal was making a noise. That's what occurred to me. I think we both guessed what it was. But proving it is something else again. Would you be willing to help me? Any way I can. Do you think you could sound like the, like the late Mrs. Lester? Well, I suppose you must know that we found her body there. Do you think that you could sound like Mrs. Lester? But why is this necessary? If Ralph killed Lucy and you found her and you know it, why don't you just arrest him? Well, the kidnap plot was very clever. How could we ever prove that the supposed kidnappers didn't kill her? The only way we can be sure he gets punished is if he convicts himself out of his own mouth. I think if you help, we can make him do that. Then for Lucy's sake, count me in. Lieutenant, I, I, I really don't understand the purpose of all this. I, I was fond of Ginger, but in my present position, I can't worry too much about the accidental death of a cat. Well, I was just wondering why you didn't hear him caterwauling last night. I didn't even know he was out. I was dead to the world after what I've been through. You sure you didn't hear him? How many times do I have to tell you? No. Well, who do you suppose killed him? Lieutenant Barth, you should know in a country like this, animals meet. Accidental deaths. There are raccoons and foxes and cars and any number of ways an animal can meet an accidental death. By strangling? Uh, is that how Ginger died? Apparently. Now, suppose you tell me why the cat picked this particular spot to howl. I'm sure I don't know. Do you know who we found in this well, Mr. Lester? Also strangled, but about 20 hours before? Your wife. Lucy? Oh, that, that's, that's awful. How, 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 how did you find her? The police are not fools, Mr. Lester. And you're not so smart. Ever since you killed her, oh. you left a trail of clues. I didn't kill her. You, you'll never prove that. Then who did? The, the, the kidnappers, of course. They, they, they never intended to let her go. What kidnappers? I'll try and prove there weren't any. I can do that for you, Lieutenant. Oh, what? Oh, what did you say? Who, who? It's me, Ralph. Lucy. But it can't be. You're dead. How can you be so sure? Because I killed you. I killed you myself. You, you, you were dead before I threw you in the well. Not quite dead, Ralph. Kept alive long enough to convict you and make you and Gloria pay for my death. Now that you have convicted yourself... Out of your own mouth, I can rest at peace. Yeah, but, Lieutenant, I still don't see why it was all necessary. We knew the guy killed her. Well, too many loose ends, Ricky. This one I wanted to nail for sure. And with all the witnesses we had last night, we got him dead to rights, sir. Huh? There's only one thing. What's that? The, uh, so-called ransom. Now, we know he had the dough. The FBI watched him put it in the locker. But, uh, who picked it up? Mr. Lester. 
It was simple. He also had the key to a box right next to the one his girlfriend had specified. His body was enough to cover the fact that he put the money in that box instead of the one the supposed kidnapper had named. He intended to go back and pick it up later. Only time ran out on him now. <laughs> Thanks to an interested neighbor and a poor little cat who mourned his mistress too much, but not wisely. I'm kind of sorry for the cat. Yeah, so am I. Except that if it hadn't been for him and Mrs. Pratt, he might have got away with it. Yeah, it's a lucky thing the cat was let out of the bank. The best laid plans of mice and men, etc., etc. But then mice are notoriously unlucky where cats are concerned. And any man that marries an older woman for her money is scarcely a lion. Ralph Lester was a mouse who tried to roar, but didn't quite have the native ability or cleverness. He ended up in his own mousetrap, and deservedly so. I'll be back shortly. The crime of passion is a sad thing because it cannot, by its very nature, be totally reprehensible. But when human nature has taken its course to the ultimate end, any concealment or attempt to escape consequences is indefensible. Thanks to Lieutenant Bart's handling of the case, no judge or jury on record could do less than to give Ralph Lester the full sentence he deserved. And for Gloria, who had been an accessory, if not before, at least after the fact, she was lucky to escape with a long term on probation. Our cast included John Beale, Joan Lovejoy, Ian Martin, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.